Welcome back, Bikeaholics. Ryan Erlacher here, lawabidingbiker.com. I always thank you for checking back in. In this video, we're going to show you how to remove and then reinstall front forks on your Harley Davidson motorcycle. Now, this segment of video was actually taken from our full detailed video on replacing your Harley front suspension and rebuilding your front forks. And I'll link to that free video in the description below. Okay, let's dive in and get our hands dirty, huh? So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove this inner fairing and to do that we need to remove the ignition switch. So right underneath there where he's putting his index finger there's a button. You want to push up on that button and he's got his key in there and we're in the fork lock position. Now with that button pushed up he's going to turn his key counterclockwise and you'll feel it release and then just slowly lift your ignition. Do not turn your ignition at all while you're pulling this out, there's a spring he's gonna have to grab too. If you do turn it, you can misalign your ignition. And uh, if you do do that, and you have a problem, and you do get it misaligned for whatever reason, uh, we do have a video on this channel on how to fix uh, that situation and realign your ignition. So uh, I'll link to that in the description below. And just because you couldn't see it when he was taking it off, he's gonna point to it. That's the little button on the very bottom that you're gonna push up on. And now it's it's in the up position because it's stuck because the key is in it and we took it off. Um, when we put it back on, we'll release it with the key and that'll snap back into position, but that's the button you wanna feel for. All right, and with a seven eighths inch wrench, he's just removing the top nut there or collar. If you don't have that big a wrench, it's no big deal. Just use some uh, channel locks or something. Just be careful not to mar it. And then he just takes that off the top there, as you can see. All right, and then there's just another piece below it, and it can only go back on one way, so just uh, pull that off there. All right, and finally, at the very bottom, there's another plastic collar there. It can only go back on one way, so slide that off of there. All right, and with a Torx 27, on the inside, both sides of that inner fairing is a little bolt you can see he's working on there. And he's just finishing backing that out, and we'll get to the other side and get that one. And Oscar just working on getting that other interfering bolt out there. All right, next we're gonna remove this inner plastic piece that says uh, four o'clock uh, ignition, etc. You can kind of see just working around. I uh, have to get his other hand in there and pop it. It just kind of snaps off. And once you get that, you can slide it up out of the way. All right, and with everything free, he can go ahead and remove this inner fairing. You can see he's just sliding it up and working it out there. And you see those little rubber grommets that fell there? Don't worry about that, we'll put those back in. So we're gonna remove this inner fairing all the way so it's out of our way. There's just a plug there, and there's just a tab on the bottom he's gonna push up on there, or push in on. And just pop that, and out of our way. So those fork cap nuts are kind of back up in there and they're tight. If you have a fork cap wrench, it's a specialty tool, we don't have one on hand today, you could certainly get up in there and have plenty of room to get those uh, nuts off. We don't have one, so we're actually just going to remove the fuel tank because all we have is a box and wrench. And uh, so we'll get this tank out of our way. It's pretty easy. We'll show you how to do it here. That's a Torx T40. There's two bolts right on the back of this tank that he's going to be removing. And he's got both of those bolts removed off the back there. Okay, so we're just going to remove a few things uh, so we can pull the tank off here in a minute. Just one plug there. Yours may be a little bit different if you have a 14 or newer, it will be different, but just look for the plugs that go up and run along the top of your tank, just a tab. Most of them are just uh, tabs and uh, just kind of push them in there and pull. Then we've got two vent lines he's gonna work. This one just dangles down on the bike. You just pull it out there. The other one you can disconnect right up here. Again, just a vent line. All right, now we've got everything disconnected. You may have to snip a few uh, zip ties to release your wire harnesses there. All right, and with a Torx T40, he's gonna, and a ratchet there, he's just backing this bolt out. Again, one on both sides, and that will free the front of this tank. And got the left side backed out there, we'll move around to the right side. Okay, so underneath the left side of your tank here is the fuel line and valve. He's gonna push up on the bottom part with his thumb there, and then with his other hand there, he's gonna pull up on that metal sleeve and then he's pulling down on the black part at the same time. And you'll see, have a rag, because you do still lose just a little bit of fuel. All right, and with all that removed, he can go ahead, he's just gonna lift on the back first and just kind of get underneath the front of it there. And you can just work it off the backbone there and he'll set that aside. All right, and with his tank removed, we've got a one and three eighths inch box end wrench. And he's gonna go ahead and break this uh, right fork cap nut. There you go. And again, it just makes it easy with the tank off to do that. 
unless you have a fork cap wrench. And I will link to the fork cap wrench in the description below. All right, and he's just finishing with his uh, fingers there, getting that fork cap nut off there on the right side. And we'll do the same to the left side. We're just lifting the bike up now with our trusty Titan lift that we love, tried and tested. If you're interested in getting hooked up with one of these and a mini jack to make these projects a lot easier, uh, we do sell them right in the Law Abiding Biker store. I will link to it in the description below. We'd love to help you get hooked up with one. Okay, so you can see we've got the bike up on the mini jack here on our Titan lift. Again, we'd love to get you hooked up with one. Um, but the reason we did that is because we're going to start working on removing the front wheel here. He's got a 15 16 socket and he's going to start breaking this. There we go. He's got that loosened. Let's take that uh, axle nut the rest of the way off. And just remember you have an axle nut and a washer there. All right, and you just got a half inch socket there. He's gonna start uh, loosening his clamp bolts here. This is just a pinch clamp that pinches the axle on the right side here. You can see you got that one broke. There's two of them there. All right, moving to the underside one there. Just getting that one loosened. And now he'll just back both of these bolts all the way out and get that clamp off there. And just remember those also have a flat washer and a lock washer on them. He's got the second one off there. And now his clamp's gonna come off. There we go. All right, so with the mini jack, we've raised the front wheel off the lift now. And with a dead blow hammer, he's just going to start uh, working that axle out. All right, now he's just working the uh, right side here now that he's got it most of the way out and he's taking some pressure off his wheel there. All right, so he's taking his axle out. Remember, there's a spacer on there. And at this point, now we're just gonna take one brake caliper off. Uh, so that we can remove the wheel the rest of the way out. All right, we're just gonna remove the right side caliper here. And those bolts are a 10 millimeter, 12 point socket to get the brake calipers off. And as you can see, they can be buggers and they can be tight. So he actually had to use a breaker bar to get them broke. And just broke the top one there. We'll back these the rest of the way out. All right, and an easy way so you get that caliper up out of your way. You don't have to disconnect the lines, just uh, zip tie it anywhere you can. We just did it to the uh, crash bars there. All right, now you can go ahead and pull his front wheel all the way out there. So now he's just working on removing the uh, left side caliper because we're gonna uh, obviously be removing the forks here. All right, so he's just clipping a few zip ties here so he has enough slack with his lines here so he can actually zip tie his brake caliper back. You can always replace those when we put it back together. That gives him enough slack there, you see, so he can go ahead and zip tie everything up out of the way. There we go, nice and neat. So you can see this one wire Oscar has for this uh, Ultra Limited. That actually runs that front light up on your fender. Now you could go up in your fairing and find the plug and unplug that, but it looks like we have enough slack. Uh, we're not gonna have to take the extra time to do that. So we'll unbolt the fender here in a second. We should just be able to lay it down on the lift without uh, having to unplug it. All right, just real quick, promise we'll get right back into your video. A ton of man hours, effort, and expenses go into helping as many bikers as we can worldwide. There is a way you can support us and get benefits. You can become a patron member. Link in the description below. You pledge a certain amount per piece of content. No risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are the benefits, like I say, t-shirts, stickers, uh, the private Facebook group, you get access to that. It's a troll free zone. Uh, access to our live private video broadcasts and chat, up to access to our premium videos upon request, and you get access to ride events and meetups. All right, let's get back into your video. So to get your front fender off, we're up underneath here, and uh, these bolts are basically staked, for lack of a better term, uh, by the metal plate there. And so all he's got is a screwdriver and a hammer, and he's gonna bend those tabs out. Once you get it uh, opened up there a little bit, he can go ahead and pry it out flat. And there's two on each bolt there. So you're gonna work on the top one there. And so the easiest way to get these completely flat is you can just turn your straight slot screwdriver flat and then you'll see him just hit it with a hammer. That'll get him flattened out the rest of the way. All right, so he's got that one done, and we'll go around and do that to all of them. Oscar's just continuing to work on those uh, plates there around the bolts. All right, now with his half-inch socket, he's gonna go around 
And with those tabs bent back, he can loosen all of these and actually back them all the way out. All right, at the very end here, um, it's probably gonna take both of us um, to uh, get the bolts out and then gently set the fender down. Okay, so we've already got the fork cap nut off. Now he's gonna go ahead with his 5 8 inch socket. And there's the fork uh, clamp bolt, the lower fork clamp bolt. He's gonna loosen that. We just wanna drop the fork down just a little ways. So he's just gonna loosen it there. And the reason we wanna drop it just a little ways and tighten it back up is we just want some clearance so then we can take our fork cap bolt off. And we're just using the bike right now so we can get some leverage on it. All right, so you can see he's dropped it down just a little bit so that we can access that fork cap bolt now. He's just tightening his pinch bolt. That's gonna hold it in there nice and secure while he uh, gets some leverage on that. Okay, now with this 21 millimeter open end wrench, he can get leverage on that fork cap bolt as you can see there and he got it broke loose. All right, so now he's gonna go ahead and loosen that lower pinch bolt and he's just gotta hold his fork to make sure it doesn't slip out. So with his other hand, he's holding onto the front of his fork because it'll just slide right out. And you can see he's sliding it out there. All right, so now we're ready to put the fork back on the bike there. And of course, he's just sliding it back up into place. And he's not going to put it all the way back up in. Just like when we took it off, we're gonna put it part way, and then we're gonna secure it with a clamp so that the fork cap bolt is exposed and we'll be able to uh, tighten that down. All right, with this 5.8 socket there, you can see he's tightening the lower pinch bolt. And again, that's just to secure the fork in there so we can tighten the cap bolt down. All right, and with this 21 millimeter wrench now, he can just tighten that fork cap bolt. It can help uh, if you have somebody holding the forks for you. So now he can loosen his uh, lower pinch bolt there so that he can slide this fork back up in. And you can see, put it back up into place there. Make sure it's seated all the way at the top. It can also help to have somebody holding the forks for this. All right, and don't forget before you put your fork cap nut back on, there's a rubber washer that comes in your rebuild kit. Make sure you seat that down inside the fork, and then you can go on with your fork cap nut, which is what he's doing. All right, so we've got these basically tightened down, the fork cap nut, and of course the lower pinch bolt. We're gonna make sure and put the bike back down on the lift once the wheel's on, and then we will torque things to specs. All right, and so now we're just gonna pick up the fender and position it back in place here between the uh, forks. I'll just get everything lined up there. So he's got his bolts and his plate back in place for his front fender. Don't forget one washer goes on the outside uh, and one on the inside in between the fender and the forks. And then he's just gonna uh, pop these uh, back in place. He's gonna bend the metal plate so the tab goes over the bolt. And he'll do that on each corner to make sure that stays in place. All right, before we put the axle back on, he's just putting a little anti-seize grease on it there, rubbing it around. All right, so now he's just working his front tire and wheel back into place here. So we've lowered the mini jack to try to line the uh, forks up uh, so that we can put the axle through the wheel. Those machine marks, make sure they go to the inside for that spacer. Okay, so now he's gonna go up with the axle, so he's gonna take the spacer off because he's gotta put it in between the forks and the wheel then he can put the axle through. And you may have to adjust up and down the mini jack uh, to get everything lined up and uh, manipulate the wheel just a little bit. Okay, so now he's got his ABS sensor. You can see how it's uh, oriented there. And he's gonna go up with that in between the fork. And the other side rests, rests up against the bearings there. And now he'll put his axle through that assembly. And you can see there, he's just uh, holding everything and there we go, worked it right through. All right, just putting everything back into place there. You can see his uh, ABS wire guide there, and then he's gonna work his caliper into place. You might have to spread those pads apart a little bit with a screwdriver, just be careful not to mar them. But as long as they fit over the disc there, you're good to go. And now he's just getting both of his bolts started there. There we go, he's got both bolts started. We'll get these uh, tightened down. All right, so he's putting his torque wrench on there and 28 to 38 foot-pounds for this bike. Make sure you check your specs. All right, and he's just getting his uh, front axle nut Finger started there, 15 16 socket on there. He'll get it snug down and then we will torque it to spec. All right, so now he's just torquing that front axle nut, 70 to 75 foot pounds for this year and model. Check your specs. There we go. So now we're gonna go up with our uh, pinch bolts and clamp. It does say right on the bottom, out. So that's the side that goes out. He'll move that up into place. 
And he's got a lock washer on there, a flat washer first, then a lock washer, then the nut. And of course, there's two of those front and back. He's got both those fingers started. And he's just gonna torque both of these to 15 foot pounds. All right, so just finishing up a few things. We're just making sure the fork cap nuts are good and tight. They do have a torque spec. Uh, if you have a fork cap wrench, you could certainly get a uh, ratchet on there and torque them down, but we're just gonna get them uh, fairly snug here with our box end wrench. All right, and he's just finishing there, torquing that lower uh, fork pinch bolt to 55 foot pounds. All right, we're just going back on with the uh, lower dash panel here. Don't forget to plug in your switches there and you're just getting that lower dash back into place there. All right, and don't forget on the lower part of that dash on both sides is just a bolt. He got it started, go back in with his T27 and tighten that down again, both sides. All right, just putting his little plate back over that's marked ignition accessory and it just snaps into place. Okay, we're putting the ignition back together and this all goes only one way it can go there. So first plastic collar there. All right, now he's putting the metal collar on. There's two tabs, one thicker one, one thinner one, and they correspond with the channels in there. And then we'll just put the uh, top nut on there, get it threaded on. All right, and with a seven eighths wrench, he's just barely snugging that on there. All right, and so now he's just putting the ignition on it, getting the keys in it. It's in the fork lock position. He's just gonna feel for the channel in there, trying not to turn it. There it goes, and all the way down. And he's gonna push it in, and then he's gonna turn his key. And you heard it snap, that's that little tab snapping. So now that he can pull the key out, and that ignition is back in place. And you can turn it back into the 12 o'clock position. And there we go. All right, and he's just lining the front tank bolts up there. And the best thing to do is just start both sides. Basically finger start them, keep them loose. And then we'll start the rear bolts before you tighten anything down. That way it's easier as you try to line the rest of the holes up. All right, you're just getting both rear bolts on the tank here lined up. And this is why we didn't tighten the front down yet. Gives you some room to wiggle here. And got the other side finger started there. Now you can go ahead and tighten these rear ones all the way down and then go up and tighten the front ones down. All right, and Oscar's just finishing up there, tightening the front tank bolts. All right, don't forget to plug your fuel line back in. Just pull up on the sleeve that push the uh, bottom portion in there till it clicks and snaps. All right, and don't forget to run your one vent line. It literally just runs down the right side of your bike and dangles. And don't forget to clean up anything else you unplug there. He's just snapping stuff back together. That's the other vent line there. And he's got his other plug there. Only goes one way. And just finally that larger plug. There we go.